Told you, delayed season, but we're having the season and then we're getting lots of eggs. This is a pastel mandarin spider pinstripe fire. At least I think it is. Double het for albino pot. What's up, snake fans? Dave Palumbo here for Muscle Serpents Daily. And today we're going into the snake room as we do every time we have one of these videos. And we're going to be looking at some cool snakes. Some boas, maybe some ball pythons. We're gonna check up on some of my colubrids because I, I have a new colubrid coming in. Um, I'm also looking at another colubrid. I don't want I don't want to give up the surprise in case someone tries to to, to get it uh, from out from underneath me. <laughs> Not that anyone's gonna want it, but uh, I have some new snakes coming in. I had to actually delay my monitors coming in, which I, I'm not telling you what they are yet, but I, I had to delay that because my vision cages are not finished yet. I don't know why. Vision usually is pretty good. They usually get those cages out really fast. For some reason, they must be backed up. So they're telling me the 17th now. So we'll have to do the, the monitor videos at the end of the month. For now, though, we have um, some Amazon tree bows we're going to be moving around because... Uh, Pablo installed some heat panels and some uh, focus cubes I had. And so over the next couple of days, we'll do some movement of some snakes and set them up in some naturalistic uh, enclosures as well. So I'm looking forward to that. And, uh, you know, we're going to look at some, uh, some onyx boas today, some dwarf, super dwarf and dwarf boas. Uh, I got the one litter. I want to show you the really red one and how they're doing. So let's go take a look and uh, see what's up in the snake room. <laughs> All right, we're going into the tub, and we have eggs. Look at that. Wow, that is cool. Told you, delayed season, but we're having the season, and then we're getting lots of eggs. This is a pastel mandarin spider pinstripe fire. At least I think it is. Double het for albino pie. Hmm. It's a pretty interesting combo. A lot of genes in here. And we're breeding it to a, let's see what we got here. <laughs> Can we get some eggs? I don't know if we have them. We got a bunch of sluggies. Uh, that's not good. I think we have one good egg. Yeah, it looks like we have two good eggs maybe in there. Now, last year we bred something similar, one of the sisters of this, to an albino pied, and we actually produced two mandarin pieds that were head albino. So we had a good outcome. So I, now we're, we're going with the other sisters. I don't know how good these eggs are. It looks like we got one, two good eggs. Yeah, let's, let's steal those eggs. So we'll put those over here for now. We'll candle those in a minute. These three eggs are no good. These are slugs. Um, first time mother. She was a year older than her sister, but she's not that big. So sometimes, you know, you don't get the best odds. I'll take two good eggs. We have a good chance of hitting possibly a mandarin pied or even a mandarin albino possibly. So I'll take some good eggs over no good eggs. Good girl, mama. That's a beautiful mama. She did a good job. I really, I really see a lot of Mandarin in this um, girl, so I'm really hoping that the Mandarin proves out because, um, you know, there's a lot of genes in here. The spider, there's pinstripe, it's probably fire. And so, pastel, it's gonna be hard. We'll see, we'll see what we get. Sometimes you just gotta pair stuff up. I didn't wanna let her go because too valuable being the double head uh, albino pied with the possible Mandarin in there. So we're gonna see what we get in 60 days and there was the daddy of that little clutch that's the um albino pie bought him a bunch of years ago probably in maybe 15 or 16. he's done some good breeding over the years for me i was so happy to get this albino pie and I, that's another one of the sisters i'm breeding him to I was so happy to get this albino pied back in the day. Like it was like, that was a big deal. Like no one had made really that many albino pieds yet. It was like one of the first, like, you know, really cool morphs. 
And I just thought that was like the, the coolest thing I'd ever seen. <laughs> and he was. And he still is. Albino pipes are still really cool. So let's see what he can do with this girl here as well. And we'll go from there. All right. I just candled these eggs. Two good ones. They're really plump. They're very, very well hydrated. They're like super taut. And uh, that's good. I mean, she, uh, she did a good job. She just wasn't maybe... Look, I was rotating that albino pied in with a few females. Maybe I just didn't keep them in long enough with her. I mean, it's a possibility. And that's why we got uh, lower fertility. But these two look really good. Hopefully they'll go to term and uh, we'll get some uh, manor and albino pieds. All right, we have another clutch of eggs here. Now this doesn't look good. There was a couple of them there. I, um, this was a, is a weird one because I wasn't really sure who the father was of this, this female. We held her back. We kind of reasoned and figured out that she's an orange dream, red stripe, yellow belly, and she, at least that's what Papa and I call her, calling her. Uh, it's impossible really to know one way or another until we, until we see what these babies produce. We bred her to a, um, an interesting male. We bred her to a high intensity orange dream super actually i think she's a super high intensity orange dream the male was at least and she freeway so that's two copies of orange dream one copy or two copies possibly even of high intensity and she and then the freeway which is the yellow belly asphalt and since she's yellow belly and i really wanted to get the red stripe into the freeway project so i'm hoping that you know we hit something with red stripe that's um, freeway. So that would be cool. So if we hit like an orange dream, and she red stripe freeway, I think that would be really cool. So we're gonna pull her, see what she's got under there. I see some slugs, but it is the first time uh, clutch for her as well. So sometimes you don't get the greatest uh, fertility. All right, mama did pretty good, but unfortunately, uh, as you're gonna see, the eggs are not very good. We didn't, we didn't. We didn't get a good fertility on these things. And, and I don't know, you know, what the reason for that was, but she's looking good. She looks like she didn't even have a clutch of eggs. I mean, she's barely, you know, when they do, when they have slugs, you'll find they don't really get as depleted because I think the slug doesn't take as much nutrients as, as like an egg that actually has a viable embryo in it does. And uh, she'll probably bounce back pretty quickly. Hopefully we can get, a, get her in the breeding program again next year uh, because, um, I don't think these eggs are going to be any good. I'll show you. Them. So this is the eggs. There we got one, two, three, four, five slugs. This one has no, nothing in it, and this one barely has an embryo in it. Like I mean, it was like one little smudge of something. I would say this is going to be a, a wash. Nothing. We're going to get nothing out of this clutch, but we'll see. I'll put these two in the incubator. I don't think we're going to see anything. Probably in a week they'll start turning brown and shrivel up. But. Not every, not every clutch is a great one, and that's just the way it works. That's uh, part of breeding snakes. This was our beautiful uh, father we used for that past clutch. Really, really nice, super orange dream. Possible super high intensity even. Enchi Freeway. Didn't get the, maybe, I don't know, it could have been his fault. Maybe he didn't get the job done. He's a 21, I mean, he's two years old, two and a half years old, he should have been old enough. We'll have to just keep an eye on him and uh, see what the future holds for him we'll have to try him again he was these things change so much when they get older he was so smoking crazy looking he's still crazy looking but he was really crazy looking when he was born so we'll get him back for sure into the rotation and uh, maybe we'll try to duplicate that breeding again next year all right got my turtles set up outside here so they can get some natural sunlight they're all basking. I just scared a couple in the water, but they were all they were all up here getting UV light. And what I've noticed is since I've been doing this a couple days a week and giving them exposure to not, just not the the basking light, but natural sunlight, they've been shedding much better. Their their whole shells have completely regenerated, and all the old shell material is is like flaking off. And look at this one. Look at this um, albino. That's an albino pink belly side neck turtle. The whole shell was like this for years. And then as soon as I got on that, all this stuff started just peeling right off. And it's got a completely new clean shell. 
This one is also starting the same thing. I noticed that the longer it's been in the sun, all these old plates are coming off and all these albinos are starting to look really beautiful. So, because I was having trouble getting these guys to eat, they weren't eating. And someone suggested putting them out there in natural sunlight. And you know what, it's been working and it's, it's hot here. It's like 95 degrees. And these guys are doing so well since I've been putting them out a couple days a week to get natural UV light. So I'd love to set them up outside. I'm just always worried that, you know, raccoons and, and predators will eat them overnight. So I haven't kept them outside. I just put them out during the day. And um, unfortunately, that's the reality of what's going on here. It's great we have a lot of wildlife here, but I don't want to see these guys eaten. <laughs> and you know what? These, these uh, predators, they'll just eat their heads off, the, especially the coyotes and stuff like that. And they just leave them. A couple of my neighbors had some problems with some turtles. So, anyway, that's my little turtle update. All right, showing a little update video. And I start off with a, a beautiful snake in a water bowl. And these boas like to soak sometimes, um, especially if they want to get some shed off themselves or if they're just hot. I don't necessarily know if this snake is hot or anything like that, but. Um, He's definitely soaking. This is this was from my Hypo Honduran T positive Onyx boa that was head for blood that I bred to an Onyx head blood head Honduran T positive. And we obviously hit a lot of great stuff here. We got a super Onyx, we got a Honduran T positive visual, and we got a visual blood. And this is probably one of the nicest super dwarf boas that I produced of 2023 so far. Let's see if we can pull them out of here for a second. Let's get a little, get a little. I know you want to soak, but I want to see how beautiful you are. Look at that. And you know, we were assist feeding him at first. He wasn't eating that well, but now he seems to be doing well. And he's one of the reddest boas that I've ever produced. Solid. I mean, look at that. And we're in shitty lighting here too, but very, very pretty snake. And we will grow him nice and slowly because these guys these super dwarf boas you don't have to try to slowly grow them slowly they only eat when they want to they're not they're not like ravenous eaters so we'll leave him alone and let's go on and look at some of his litter mates all right here's another beautiful beautiful baby boy from that same litter this one's a what i think to be a hypo super onyx honduran t positive or Maybe not Hunter and T-positive. I think it's Hunter and T-positive, and then it's probably Het Blood. I don't think it had. We I don't think we hit all the genes like we did for the um, the last snake, which is solid, solid color. So this is either Blood or Hunter and T-positive. I haven't decided. I think it it might be Blood, but the Hunter and T-positives are really, really red too. This one has more pattern than the other one, and you can see he's very red, but he's. He's not as red as, as this guy was here, so so I don't know exactly what he is, but we'll continue to track him as he grows. All right, here's another super onyx boa, which might not be this one's in the shed actually. This might not be hypo. Um, this could be this could be, however, blood and Honduran T positive. We might have just not, and maybe that's what was going on with the other one. Maybe this one wasn't. This is not hypo either, although he looks hypo. This one's really red, but he's got more darkness in him, which I think, I just don't see hypo in here. Uh, very dark head, but very red. So it's, and I know it's super onyx. Something's lightening it up. Is it the hypo gene? I don't know. Or is it the blood gene? Or is it the Honduran T positive gene? Very hard to tell. And... I've been having trouble identifying this, this this litter. Now, the good thing is I'm not really letting anything go too quickly, so um, I'm not sure with this, but I, I love his dark head. And blood typically has a lot of darkness in it in addition to the reds, so I wouldn't be surprised if this was a super onyx blood without the hypo gene and without the Honduran T-positive gene in here. All right. Here is a Hypo Onyx. It's Het Honduran T positive and 66% Het blood. Beautiful, beautiful little boy. I really, really love 
hypo onyxes. They have a really nice, let's see if we can get that red tail in there. Because onyxes are, are, you know, they're like leopards, so they're very dark. But when you take the hypo gene and you remove some of that darkness, you get a lot of reds coming out, so you can see. Really nice male if you're looking to get into the super dwarf um, onyx project. This can get you in at a relatively lower cost, and you could possibly hit some really cool stuff because you can breed this to a visual blood and you can get blood stuff. If you hit the blood, uh, it's obviously 100% hit Honduran T positive, so if you get breed into something Honduran T positive, you're going to get 50% uh, of them will be Honduran T positive. So there's a lot you can do, and I can create pairs too for you so you can produce superonic stuff. You might want to pair this that little boy with this beautiful superonic Het Honduran T positive, 66% het blood. Little girl. What a great combination. Look at this girl. She is stellar. That is beautiful. Super onyx. Look at the reds under there. You can see that peeking out under her bottom there, on her lower ventral side. And if you breed that to that male, you can produce hypo, super onyx, Honduran T positives. If you get lucky, you might even hit blood. Great, great combination. I love this girl. I really, she's so nice. I want to keep her, but can't keep everything. And we'll finish off today with my gorgeous super fire diamond boas in their naturalistic enclosure with their tree branches and their UV light and all the great accoutrements that come with that. And uh, I'm not going to get too close to this little boy or girl. I'm not sure which one this one is. There's one down there chilling. And this one looks like it's one to eat. So. <laughs> They're so beautiful, these things, really. I mean, I almost, you almost get to a point where you're like, you know what, I just want to shut everything up in a beautiful setup like this and not even breed anything anymore. It's just, just leave them alone. Let them do their thing. It's so, it's so peace. It's like watching it. You know, I used to have fish tanks and it's like, I had a lot of fish tanks. I had 16 fish tanks and it would be so peaceful after you clean them just to sit there and watch them for hours and hours and hours and that's how I feel about these snakes and these arboreal setups and the ones that I have outdoors and the outdoor setups. They're just so content. All right guys, that's gonna do it for today here at Palumbo's Pythons and Boas. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Uh, once again, a little potpourri Monday video, which will probably come out on Tuesday of different stuff that I just happened to, you know, look at in my room i'm actually i'm actually to be honest with you i didn't admit this but i have a lost snake i have another sand boa my first sand boa got away found it the other sand boa escaped somehow because these things are like escape artists i didn't realize it and it's been out for a couple weeks now and uh, two weeks and i'm kind of upset about it and uh, i'm actually giving rewards out to my children if they find the snakes because sometimes little kids can can just happen to find the weirdest thing so there's an all points bulletin out for a very beautiful Kenyan Sambo in my uh, snake room. Anyone who finds it, I will give them a reward because I'm very upset about the fact that it's gone. All right, aside from that, I want to give a huge, huge congrats out to Juggernaut Reptiles. They produced the very first, world's first, leucistic blood python. That's right, leucistic blood python. There was never one in existence. Now we have one. It looks like to be, it looks to be a black eyed, uh, leucistic it's snow white this thing it's gonna look outstanding when this thing grows up right now they're babies they kind of look like ball pythons but you know when they get big ball, um, blood pythons get really girthy they get as, as thick as a, as a Burmese python but they don't get as long so this this snake is just gonna be off the chart there's that he actually produced two of them so huge congrats I don't know what the uh, genes were I don't think he's revealed that yet in terms of what the super form or if it was an allelic combination but there are now leucistics in the world of blood pythons amazing keep doing crazy great things everyone out there I love it. I don't have to be the guy who discovers anything I just like to see new and exciting stuff in the hobby all right guys you know what to do hit that subscribe button turn on those notifications hit that like button I'll see you back tomorrow morning Thank you.